Hunter Labrada, two flat. We look at his latest physique update ahead of a Tampa Pro. Also, Jay Cutler is shredded just days out, plus much more. What's up, desktopers? Xavier Wills here for Desktop Bodybuilding, and we are back for another bodybuilding news video. And let's kick this one off with the latest update from Keon Pearson, 19 days out of that Texas Pro 212 Championship where he is looking like he is way up in size. He says he's 210 pounds, which is 10 pounds up on his weight from the Olympia last year in the 212s, where he placed inside the top five. Super, super impressed by these latest updates. The upper body is enormous. The legs have improved, although there is still that discrepancy between the upper and lower body there. But Keon has such balance. He poses so well that I don't think it's such a big discrepancy that it's going to really hurt him. Uh, in the Olympia lineup, had he had legs, you know, with an extra five pounds, four pounds on them or whatever, would it increase his chances of winning that Olympia title this year? Absolutely, no doubt. But the big thing for Keon Pearson is the conditioning. Can he come in ultra conditioned and take out that title versus an always bursting full shredded Sean Clarita? Remains to be seen, but it seems like it's definitely on the cards this year and in the next couple of years for Keon Pearson. But he has said as well, for those of you guys who didn't catch it on an episode of Bodybuilding University, his ultimate goal is to move from 212 to the Open, which is super exciting, and I cannot wait for that, but I can also not wait to see how he does at this year's 212 Olympia. Granted, obviously, he wins that Texas Pro and qualifies. In our next story, Phil Heath is making his way into the International Sports Hall of Fame, which is always announced at the Arnold Classic in March each year. And this is huge for Phil Heath. But what is very interesting about this as well is normally guys get introduced and put into the Hall of Fame after their career is over in terms of their competitive career and whatever sport uh, is their sport of choice. And that's pretty interesting because Phil Heath has alluded recently, and I have done a few videos on it as well, where there's sort of suggestions that he may be making a comeback to the bodybuilding stage. So could he be the first guy? Now, I don't know the stats on this to actually be introduced into the Hall of Fame and then still be competing in his pro career. It remains to be seen. I believe Phil Heath will make a comeback to the bodybuilding stage, but I just wanted to say huge congrats to Phil Heath on being included and introduced into that International Sports Hall of Fame. And he's going to join as well his early days mentor in Jay Cutler, who's already been introduced into that as well. Our next story is on that man as well, Jay Cutler, days out from his Fit for 50 challenge. Jay's about to turn 50 years of age, and if I look anything like Jay at 50 years old, I would be incredibly happy. I definitely will never have that size, but he is shredded. Like The abs are super, super tight, and you look at his actual intercostals as well, which is those muscles up on the side of the abs. They are inside out shredded. I don't think we ever saw his abs that lean during his pro career. Like, I've never seen that level of detail on the side. And sometimes with age, the skin gets a little more thin. But that is absolutely insane. So Jay's got to be pretty happy with how he's looking. He has said in some updates that he's not happy with how he's looking in certain stages. And, you know, many people would say, Jay, you're crazy or whatever. And then there's other people saying that he doesn't look like he looked like when he competed. So you've got people on both sides of a coin. But this dude is about to turn 50 years of age. And there are very few 50-year-old uh, bodybuilders or people full stop that look like Jay Cutler. Now, we had a guy like Dexter Jackson competing until he's 50. He's a complete one in a million or one in a hundred million sort of person. So you sort of got to throw him out in all this argument. And, you know, guys like Vince Taylor, also just crazy, crazy genetics for that sort of stuff. But Jay's not obviously in his competitive career right now, but he's doing, you know, I think he said an hour, hour and a half of cardio a day, something like that. He's training him a day as well. And, you know, he really, you know, for him, it's probably a step back from what he used to do but it's still pretty crazy dedicated. And that's why Jay looks the way he looks. And yeah, I imagine Jay's going to look good from 50 to 60 and probably 60 to 70 and going to blow some people away like that. But uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Have you enjoyed Jay's Fit for 50? Would you like to see Jay compete? And would you like to see him actually pose on stage at that Masters Olympia, which he has suggested he might do, not in a traditional guest posing sense, but he wants to take his shirt off and hit a few poses. So Hopefully, we do get to see that on an actual stage. There'll be photos, and it adds a bit to the Masters Olympia as well. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below on that. 
Now, here's a competitor list for the 2023 Tampa Pro, which is being held this weekend. I'll be going live for the contest. I'll be doing a preview, all that sort of stuff. So make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell button. But I was excited for this competitor list to be dropped uh, because Hunter Labrada is the clear favorite. Blessing of Waterboo was meant to be in the show. He's no longer going to be competing in this one, which is unfortunate, obviously. And uh, I'll read out the list to you. Lewis Breed, Stephen Daniels, Roy Evans, Brady King, Hunter Labrada, Nate Spear, and Joel Thomas. So a few good guys at the bottom of that list, but compared to what we've seen in years past, the competitors lists are just not where they should be right now. Now, is that because the point system's been taken away? Is it because just some guys are sitting out this year, like a Martin Fitzwater and a few other guys like Mark Hector? Maybe. Maybe that's the reason why. I mean, I don't know the exact reason why, but I am actually going to do a video on this and give my opinion on why I think the competitors list are not where they should be, at least this year, and also fixes for this. Because I, you know, a lot of people have issues with something, but they don't have any suggestions on how to actually fix it or they can't do anything about it. I've got a bunch of suggestions that I think are very, very good, and you guys can let me know what you think. So make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell button because I will have content from the show over the weekend, and you will be able to see that video and give your opinions in the comments. And I might even take this to the Bodybuilding University podcast and uh, air it out with a whole bunch of IFB pros as well. But yeah, this competitors list is just not looking like it's going to be a competitive one. But when you look at the competitors lists in the 212, pretty damn stacked. We've got about 15 plus guys in that lineup. Some good names, Robert Taylor. We've also got Kevin Johnson, who just got second in a 212 show. Some really good names. And then you look at the classic physique list, which is absolutely huge. You've got some really good names in that as well. You've got uh, Robert Waterhouse, who recently just got third in a show, but arguably could have even potentially won that. We've got Logan Guthrie, who's been on the uh, Bodybuilding University podcast. Funny guy, great physique as well. Matthew Grego, who actually watches this channel and has a great physique, just got second in a classic physique show. So pretty damn good competitors list. And I'm sure I'm missing out a ton of really good names in that lineup as well. And when you look at the men's physique, there is just tons of names on that list, too many to even mention. So it goes to show that open men's bodybuilding in the pro ranks is definitely struggling at the moment. Is it too many shows? We'll have to go over that in a separate video because I have a lot of suggestions and a lot of potential reasons as to why that is. But let's go to the guy that actually is the front runner for that show in Hunter Labrada. And this is his latest physique update. This was posted on his YouTube channel as well. The link to the full video is in the description below. This is 10 days out and he is peeled. You guys could see it from the back just there. Glutes are all the way in. We've never seen this sort of conditioning from Hunter Labrada. And he actually said this is the first day, uh, I believe, on the day of this video, that he hasn't done an hour and a half of the stepper, step mill. So I'm actually looking at his legs because as soon as I heard that, I went back to check his legs in this video. And really, they don't look like they've come down a huge amount in size, if at all, but maybe potentially a little bit. Like, is he a little bit flatter than I've seen him in the past? Absolutely. Like, when he hits that side chest, I think his upper body just looks a little bit deflated. Now, is that just flatness in terms of the dieting, all that sort of stuff? And he will and will he fill up to, you know, being really full, really round with this extra conditioning? Potentially, absolutely. And I love to see the detail. And I think this is regardless going to be his all-time best. But is he sacrificing maybe a little bit too much and going too deep into that hole? You know, hopefully not. I don't think so. I think he's going to be all right. Could he be a little bit too flat and maybe is, is his best a little bit less than this in terms of just pushing all the way down? Potentially, but I think this is going to be his all-time best. So I don't want to be too hard on Hunter here because I think it would be by far his all-time best. And you're better to go too far in ways of conditioning rather than too far in ways of fullness because conditioning will always be better than too full and not in good enough condition. And honestly, this could just be absolutely perfect for Hunter Labrada. He could nail something and be right up there in the Mr. Olympia. I do encourage Hunter, though, please help open pro bodybuilding. Do that Texas pro. We can have Carlos Thomas Jr. We can have Andrew Jack and yourself up there. And it creates more chances. It's going to be a battle for that win after prejudging going into finals. Because we've seen actually a fair bit of that this year. But we just want to see a higher caliber of guys in a more stacked lineup. And also, you can practice your peak a little bit more. Like he said in the video, he's only done 10 shows full stop. That's it. And you know half of his shows have been pro contests, but continue to compete, get that stage experience, practice different peaks. You know, you might come into this show and go, yeah, we were a little bit flat. 
and then fill right out for Texas and go, wow, this is another level with the same conditioning. Or he might try to fill up and it'll be too much for his physique. And he goes, okay, well, back to the drawing board. And just say he doesn't win, if it's at least somewhat close, I think momentum's overrated. So I would do that. And, you know, he could hold a really good guy out from actually getting on that Mr. Olympia stage. And now he wants to compete against the best. We all hear that. But that could be a massive difference in prize money. If you're talking about the top five competitors in the Mr. Olympia, if Hunter's able to put himself in there, you know, maybe he beats a slightly off Andrew Jack or Carlos Thomas if he just misses the mark. If he beats these two guys, he could take out Carlos Thomas Jr. and Andrew Jack potentially from competing at the Mr. Olympia unless they decide to go and do future comps. I think Carlos said he probably won't, 85% sure he won't if he doesn't win this contest. So you're going to take Carlos Thomas out of it. You're going to take Andrew Jack out of it, potentially, unless he goes on to do a comp overseas or something like that. So I think it would be wise for Hunter to go on and do that show. In my opinion, you guys can let me know what you think in the comments below. Should Hunter do not only the Tampa Pro, also the Texas Pro? I think so, because he's only going to be so far out of the Olympia as well. And by the time he does Texas, he's still going to have like 12 weeks anyway to the Olympia. So plenty of time to have a bit of a deload because he's in such good shape now and then come into that comp fully firing for the last 10 weeks. Anyway, guys, that's it for this video. If you did enjoy it, give the video a thumbs up, smash that like button, also subscribe and hit the notification bell button. So that way you'll be notified of every video that goes up for myself, Xavier Wills at Desktop Bodybuilding. So that's it for me, Xavier Wills, this is Desktop Bodybuilding, and we are out.